welcome to Rising. We have a really superb show planned for you today. Here's a special thing that's going to happen. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will be back on Rising in studio later today to talk about his testimony before Congress about the weaponization of the federal government and efforts to censor free speech on social media at the government's behest. So we'll talk about that with him and much more. Can't wait for it. But first, some other big news obviously happening on the Hill. Brianna, take it away. Well, Robbie, IRS whistleblowers who raised red flags about the DOJ's investigation into Hunter Biden spoke before the House Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government yesterday. Joseph Ziegler, a 13-year veteran and former lead IRS case agent on the Hunter Biden tax probe, said prosecutors at the DOJ hamstrung his investigation. Let's watch. I will also note that while the impression has been conveyed, by the U.S. attorney in Delaware that he has similar powers to that of a special counsel in this case, free reign to do as needed. That was not the case. It appeared to me, based on what I experienced, that the U.S. attorney in Delaware in our investigation was constantly hamstrung, limited, and marginalized by DOJ officials as well as other U.S. attorneys. I still think that a special counsel is necessary for this investigation. Ziegler later described how federal prosecutors ignored his team's recommendation to charge Hunter Biden with felony tax fraud. In early August of 2022, federal prosecutors from the Department of Justice Tax Division drafted a 99-page memorandum. In, in so, they were recommending for approval felony and misdemeanor charges for the 2017, 18, and 19 tax years. That did not happen here, and I am not sure why. Now, Ziegler reported to 14-year IRS veteran and special agent Gary Shapley, another whistleblower. Shapley also dropped this bombshell yesterday. The Justice Department allowed the president's political appointees to weigh in on whether they're charged the president's son. After United States Attorney for D.C. Matthew Graves, appointed by President Biden, refused to bring charges in March 2022, I watched United States Attorney Weiss tell a room full of senior FBI and IRS senior leaders on October 7th, 2022, that he was not the deciding person on whether char charges were filed. That was my red line. Later in the hearing, Shapley admitted he was blocked from further investigating more possibly incriminating WhatsApp messages from Hunter Biden. You know, with respect to the WhatsApp messages, it was something we clearly needed to follow up on, and, th and, and that was really one of the major deviations from, in this case, is that, is that investigators asked, and Special Agent Ziegler asked to follow, uh, uh, to take some investigative steps to review that, and it just simply wasn't supported by the prosecutors. So uh, for d further delving into what that means, uh, I just simply can't do. When questioned yesterday, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said that President Biden is focused on lowering costs for Americans, not on the hearing. So uh, what did you make of what we heard from this, uh, this new witness coming forward, didn't know his identity before, uh, Joseph Ziegler? So he started out by actually talking about how he wasn't a partisan. Um, I think, believe he said he was a Democrat, that he is a member of the LGBT community, and that for all of these reasons, whatever stereotypes people might have of why he might be coming for and giving this testimony are not accurate. And he came off as credible and raising some interesting questions about the course of this investigation. Namely, the case that the two witnesses made was that there was not sufficient explanation given for why the text messages, the WhatsApp messages where Hunter Biden represents that the big guy, that his dad, is next to him and, um, you know, that he has that relationship where he can, he's in the room. We, we got him. You know, the, the idea of pay for play, why that, that particular exchange wasn't followed up on uh, specifically with um, uh, this kind of cell tower information that will give you the location of where Joe Biden was at that moment. Was he just bluffing or was Joe Biden really, was the big guy really with him? Now, there's a counter argument that says even if he was in the room, it doesn't necessarily mean that he was aware of anything that his son was texting about. And I think that the biggest issue that conservatives have is that there still remains no smoking gun. They can point to aspects in the investigation mm -hmm. that perhaps should have been followed up upon. But at this point, it does feel like, well, what if there was something more? Democrats made the counter argument overall that this is a prosecutorial discre discretion issue and that 
in most, if not all cases, and the witnesses agreed to this, that in 90 percent of the cases, they said, um, their recommendation, their charging recommendations aren't aren't followed up by, followed up on by the prosecutors because prosecutors have a different set of concerns as they look at the legal merits of a case as opposed to just whether or not the letter of the law was broken technically according sure. to the IRS IRS's rules and laws. Sure, I mean that's the issue here is because there is a genuine gray zone for yeah. how much for for the extent to which charges get brought in criminal cases there is prosecutorial discretion sometimes and, and right, th this is all within the law. The pro you could have a prosecutor in a situation who really wants to throw the book at someone who thinks the case is really strong. They could be wrong about how strong the case is and they could lose. They could be worried about the case and want to charge less because they don't want to uh, take, a, take a loss. All of that stuff does happen. Um, but it, <laughs> because it's the president's son and because of everything else we know about all the concerns that conservatives and Republicans have about law enforcement, it, it's so hard not to um, wonder whether there was um, unfairness, even if it didn't technically violate any laws or anything, but there was some preferential treatment going on. In fact, it would be, it'd be odd if there wasn't any preferential treatment on, because we know that the children of well-connected, wealthy political people, e even in terms of what we're talking about here, if we're talking about drug stuff, that, that um, uh, disadvantaged people caught in drug situations get the book thrown at them, and and privileged people who get caught in drug situations get off, get off all the time. Yeah, and that, like that's a well known phenomenon. That's yeah. a, it's a well studied and demonstrated phenomenon. Um, so it would be not at all unreasonable if that was occurring here. And I, so I bristle a little bit at certainly Republicans, you know, have have promised more than has been delivered. I think. Uh, but Democrats also have like a, there's absolutely nothing to see here. Why are you still talking about this well, attitude? Also, I think Democrats are bristling a little at the idea that to the extent the government is being weaponized, the Department of Justice is being weaponized, that it is a Democratic exploit as opposed to a conservative one. Several Democrats brought up uh, Trump's very explicit efforts to um, intercede on the behalf of Paul Manafort and Roger Stone and um, Flynn. And he was, you know, all of the tweets and out, li out loud statements that he made about their innocence and how the Justice Department, his many people that he appointed in his own Justice Department, he felt were unfair in the ways that he tried to thwart that and those investigations and ultimately pardon uh, so many people on his way out of the door. Um, and so I think that many Democrats felt like even if you, even if there was a generalized case here to be made about how unfair it is that wealthy and well-connected mm -hmm. people tend to escape the same punishment as poor or less connected people, that Donald Trump or this version of the Republican Party isn't the best, ba aren't the best bannermen for that particular well, idea. but I mean, I think that's a, a different, uh, pardoning someone, that's, that's a no, clearly... No, that was just the final nail in the, that's well, the, that was the final resolution. Like if Joe Biden pa pardons Hunter Biden, then it's, it's out in the open, it's public. You can, you know, hold Joe Biden accountable for that by not voting for him next time, you know, he's up for, well, if he runs, like he is running if he's the nominee. Um, if, if he's discreetly behind closed doors, or, or not even him, but, but a state apparatus that is at this point more loyal to Democrats than MAGA people, obviously, is, is doing something to help out Hunter Biden that's secret and behind closed doors, that's really what the concern is. Right. I mean, the thing about Trump is not, that his efforts to Not the loud, in-your-face, right, the ridiculous things Trump said, which I'm not going to defend because they are ridiculous and he shouldn't be the president either. Well, sure. I mean, but the point that Democrats were making is that, for what it's worth, Biden hasn't weighed in on this publicly in any way. He hasn't been crying about a witch hunt or saying mm -hmm. that people are out to get him. One of the Democratic representatives who um, spoke said something about how um, uh, not only that Joe, it, it, it speaks well of Joe Biden that he hasn't uh, weighed in publicly, but there is an argument that because Hunter Biden is such a prominent figure that the witch hunt is going in the other direction. It's not clear that if he were an anonymous person, he would be receiving more versus less attention, given that there is also a great deal of political juice that can get that can come out of um, Republicans going after him in this way. Right. But, we, but uh, Biden was allowed to, you know, when Hunter Biden stuff first came up, Biden was allowed to say, "This is fake. This is believed to be all fake." accusations based on a fake laptop, and top law enforcement have confirmed that because he had, 
you know, those 50 or however many agents who, who signed that letter in his corner. And that, that's the concern about bias. Now, but, with, yeah, well, there is the question of whether or not that anything on that laptop still is connected to the actual accusations here, whether it's fine. the tax fraud accusation or the kind of other uh, felony gun charge accusations. Well, whistleblower Joseph Ziegler also sat down with CBS to explain why he came forward. Let's watch some of that. What you have to gain from coming forward? I do this with a heavy heart. This is awful. It's, it's not a fun experience to go through this. I don't wish this upon anyone. So why do it? Because at the end of the day, I want our justice system to not play sides if you have money or political favor. That's the only way we're, gonna, we're going to um, restore the confidence in our justice system. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the argument here boils down to, I just don't think that Joe Bi uh, that Hunter Biden rather was charged with enough, that he should have been charged with, uh, been accountable for more um, of the years of tax evasion than he ultimately, we, the, the, he, we expect for him to have to be accountable for in terms of paying the back taxes. And also there's a lot of conjecture around this plea deal, which we don't won't know the details of, I believe, until the 26th of this month, saying that. The, the, the plea was too lenient. Well, I think that's a case better made after we know the details of the plea agreement, which also became a, a sticking point during the testimony that they would lead up to the edge of saying, well, Hunter Biden isn't, is, is getting off easy, which is something no one really fully knows at this juncture. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be on the American public to decide whether or not this is the kind of thing that they are going to invest time and energy in and caring about whether Hunter Biden should uh, have a somewhat more higher criminal penalty, whether or not he should be treated differently on the margins, because at the end of the day, he was charged and there was some kind of investigation. And it's, it's you know, it, it, it all comes down on how much you kind of subjectively and individually believe that if they were to look at the location information on Joe Biden's cell phone, they would discover some kind of smoking gun. Mm. Or if they had more access to the WhatsApp messages, there would be something there that's more incriminating. But we know, we, we the information about the payments from Burisma, and I think the very bad optics relationships that uh, the Hunter Biden had in the region, the fact that he wasn't qualified and was getting paid large sums of money to do who knows what, those things do look bad. And the public already can make decisions about whether or not they think the Biden family has integrity. The question is whether or not they can link anything to Joe Biden himself that's actually criminal wrongdoing. Mm. Well, we'll have more rising right after this.